this video, we're going to create code in Excel VBA that will track changes made to a worksheet in our workbook and log those changes on a second sheet. So what you see here is a preview of what we're going to create today. On this first sheet, I have a list of different project numbers, the begin date. We have in column C, a drop down list of different statuses for each of those projects and comments in column D. On sheet two, I have the change history that gets added every time an update is made to the status or comments. So you can see here, it shows the cell that was edited the new value it was updated to, the previous value, the user who made the update, and then the date and time. So if I change C9 to phase one, you can see the log updates. C9 was changed to phase one from not started by Bradley on April 16th. So the first thing we want to do is get into the VBA editor window. You can do that by hitting Alt F11 on your keyboard or going to the developer ribbon and clicking on this visual basic button. Now, normally I would right click, go to insert module, but we're talking about a change event where the code triggers based on a change that happens on our worksheet. So that is code that is specific to the worksheet. So we want to track changes on sheet one. So I'm going to double click on sheet one. I'm going to select this first drop down menu for worksheet. Now this will automatically populate a private subroutine for a worksheet selection change event. We actually don't want this. What we want is a worksheet change event. So I'm going to go to the second drop down menu of all the different event types. I'm going to select just change and I'm going to get rid of this first one that populated. So this is the subroutine for a change event, meaning a change that happens. This, this subroutine will trigger code when a change is made to sheet one, the sheet we're on now. And it has a built-in variable called target, which represents the cell that gets changed. So right now this will do nothing. We need to tell it to actually do something when a change happens on our sheet. So between the sub and in sub portions is where our code needs to go. So to save time, I already created some code here that I'm just gonna paste in here. So we begin with a for each loop with a variable called J. And the reason we need that is in the change event, the target variable can only handle one change one cell at a time. If you try and make edits to multiple cells at a time, it throws an error. So we simply create a variable called J that represents each individual cell in our target variable if more than one cell has a change. That way we don't get an error. So we declare some object variables. We have WB for workbook that represents the workbook we're in now. We have a variable called worksheet2 that represents sheet2 where we want to log our changes. We have a variable called next row which is the next available blank row where we can put the log of the most current change on sheet2. So we set our object variables. Our workbook is equal to this workbook. Our worksheet is equal to our workbook variable and then worksheet sheet two we have our next available row variable which is our worksheet two variable and then cells the rows input is rows count which counts every single row on our spreadsheet so that takes us to the last row and then we're in column a because we want to log our log in column A, so that's column one. So this takes us to the very last row in column A 
from there we do end XL up which is like hitting control up arrow that will take us to the last row containing values in column A from there we get that row number add one to it to get the next available blank row so we have a variable called cell address as a string that is going to be equal to our J variable which represents each cell where an edit is made we get the address of that we then have a variable called new value which is equal to again our cell variable and the value so that gets the value of the cell where the change is made now we move on to creating our old value variable that captures the old value before the change was made so we have application enable events set that to false because what we want to do here is something that is not triggered by a change event we want to undo the change that was just made temporarily so that we can capture the old value of that cell store it in this variable then we're gonna hit undo one more time once we do that that changes it back to the new value and then we enable events again finally we are ready to log everything because we have our old and new value variables so in our worksheet two cells our next row variable for the row and column one column a for the column we're going to set that value equal to our cell address variable use a variable to or i'm sorry use the and symbol to join that to some text was changed to use another and symbol to join that to our new value variable another and symbol I ran out of space here so I hit space and underscore to continue this on a new line so we add some more text from another and symbol old value variable another and symbol to join it to some more text by and then we have the username with the environment method that gets the user who made the edit another and symbol join it to two double quotes with a space just a space there and then another and symbol and space underscore to continue this on a new line and then we have a date and timestamp so we have the now function nested inside the format function the now function returns the date and then we format that in a month day year time format and then if we made changes to more than one cell at a time we just go to the next cell that was changed in our collection of cells in the target and repeat all these steps so that should be everything we need here for this to work so now I'm just gonna clear everything out here and we'll start making some edits so I'm gonna change that to phase one C2 was changed to phase one from not started by Brad Bradley on April 16th so I could add some comments like ready to process you can see D2 was changed to ready to process from nothing by Bradley on April 16th if I wanted to update multiple cells at once I could do that as well you can see all of these cells where the edit was made get a new value old value the user and the date and time well that is all for now thanks for watching